the kidney can be a particularly tricky organ to look at histologically. So today we're just going to focus on a single component of the nephron, the glomerulus. On this schematic, the glomerulus forms the first part of the nephron, the functional unit of the kidney. It's where the blood is filtered with small molecules passing into the Bowman space. There are two major blood vessels, one entering and one leaving the glomerulus. These are the afferent and efferent arterioles respectively. They feed into a tight mesh of capillaries called the glomerular tuft. The endothelial cells here have gaps between them called fenestrations that allow small molecules to pass through. Within the glomerulus itself there are three different types of cell. The endothelial cells that line the capillaries, the podocytes that are lining the Bowman space, and the mesangial cells that form a very small amount of connective tissue that holds everything together. And now on to the histology. This is the kidney at low power. We have a thin fibrous capsule along the outside and then the cortex beneath that. The cortex is formed of the tubules, both proximal and distal, and the glomeruli, which you can see as each of these round structures surrounded by a thin white halo. So let's focus in on a glomerulus and see if we can find some of the structures that we were talking about. At first glance, it looks like a real mess. There's nuclei everywhere, and you're probably starting to wonder how you're going to be able to tell one cell from another. So let's have a little look at the basic structure first. In the center we've got the glomerular tuft which is going to be formed of the three cell types, the endothelial cells of the capillary, the few mesangial cells and the podocytes. The white space around that and kind of between little lobes of the capillary tuft is the Bowman space. Surrounding that we've got nuclei of squamous epithelium these are the cells of the Bowman's capsule. So now let's move on to the challenge of seeing if we can identify individual cell types within the glomerular tuft itself. This is the same glomerulus that we were just looking at, but at a higher power. We can begin to pick out the capillaries that are forming the tuft itself. So wherever you see red is red blood cells, so that must be a capillary there. For example here, we can just about see a capillary snaking round and forming a little loop. This will be another capillary. And here perhaps another one. We know that the endothelial cells are going to be lining the capillaries. So for example, this nucleus here is within the lumen of this capillary. So this is likely to be an endothelial cell. On the other hand, we know that the podocytes are going to be on the outside of the capillaries. So for example, we have a capillary space here, and then a cell nucleus that's on the outside of that capillary and facing into the Bowman space. So this nucleus here is a podocyte. Same with this one here, probably this one here, and this one here. Mesangial cells are going to be more difficult to pick out since we don't really know whether, for example, this nucleus here is on the edge of a capillary space or whether it's forming part of the interstitium. But this could possibly be a mesangial cell. So let's skip on over to another glomerulus. There's one just next door. Let's have a crack at this one here. If you want, you can pause the video and see if you can pick out some capillaries endothelial cells, mesangial cells and podocytes. If not, well, I'll start doing it for you. There's a nice capillary here. Probably another one snaking down there. And then a couple of clear spaces kind of within the glomerulus that are probably capillaries, a nice blood filled space there, and then another one here. So we can pick out some endothelial cells from that that's probably an endothelial cell. So is that one. This one underneath, probably a mesangial cell. And then there are lots of good podocytes. This one's on the outside, that one, that one, that one. And you can see them all lining up along this capillary here. There's another one there and another one just lining up nicely around the outside of the capillaries. Perfect. So there's just a couple of other structures that 
make up the glomerulus, that being the afferent and efferent arterioles. So here, I mean, with a couple of these, you get the impression that the glomerular tuft is kind of hanging on to one edge. You see how there's a nice gap. Whoops. There's a nice gap around here, but over here it's kind of stuck to the wall a bit. This is the vascular pole where the afferent and efferent arterioles will come in and feed the capillaries. But this glomerulus just in the centre here, we have a nice blood vessel and then it's sending off a branch, doo -doo 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 -doo, which is feeding into the glomerulus. So I can't tell you if this is afferent or efferent, but at least there's proof that the blood vessels do connect into the glomeruli. And then the final structure is the link to the proximal tubules, also known as the urinary pole. So here's the best example of a urinary pole that I could find in this slide. It's not particularly good. Sometimes you can get them really clearly. And the next time I find a really good one, I'll post a picture on my Instagram account, which you can follow at down the scope. So here we have our glomerulus and you can see it looks contiguous with this proximal tubule here. So all of the filtrate that is passing from the capillaries through the basement membrane, past the processes of the podocytes and into the Bowman space here is going to drain into the lumen of this proximal tubule. So I hope that was a helpful video about the histology of the glomerulus, which can be a bit tricky. In the next video, I want to concentrate on telling the difference between a proximal renal tubule and a distal renal tubule. So look out for that. And until next time, goodbye.